Good morning and, and welcome to the Really Helpful Club. And this is the latest in our In Conversation series. And I'm Sarah Austin. And we absolutely love this series because this is where we shine the spotlight on different entrepreneurs, business owners, leading experts in their field uh, within our community. And this is where we learn all about the person behind the business, what inspired them to start the business, what they've learned along the way, some of their journey. And this morning, I'm gonna be talking to Dana Mason, who is the founder of Stronger Women Over 50. Really looking forward uh, to talking to Dana because we know that there's a significant part of our community that are really interested um, in what she has to offer, all about helping people through that menopausal journey, stay fit, focus on their health and well-being. Um, so as I say, I'm going to be joined by Diana. I love this part in the um, in the process where I'm doing the introduction, just waiting for my guest to, to come on screen. And um, so I'm going to be joined by Diana in a minute. Um, it's been a fascinating series where I think I've done 45 of these interviews and I absolutely love it. I always It's always a revelation. We always learn about the journey behind the business and we always think it's it's almost as interesting, if not more interesting, how someone got to launch their business in the first place. What was their story? What have they learned along the way? And we found that so many of our guests have, um, they've taken their own um, their own path. They've perhaps had a, a business or a career path before they've launched their own business. And it's really interesting to, to see the journey that they've taken. So um, I wonder if uh, Diana's having a few problems uh, with joining us. So I'm gonna stop. Um, and oh, here she is! Fantastic. So, uh, Dana, I am delighted to see that you've uh, you've joined us. What I'm going to do, I've just been um, sort of setting the scene and explaining um, explaining the whole background to our in conversation series with us. Dana's going to be joining us on screen in a minute. And as I say, Dana is a, a fitness coach that specialises in uh, helping women over fifty. Dana, hello. Good morning. Welcome on board. Good morning. Good morning. Fantastic. Thanks for having me here. Well, my pleasure. And I can <laughs> see from, I think, you know, from where we are, are you in your studio? Yes. Yes, I'm upstairs. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've got well, the it? yoga bolsters behind me, some yoga blocks. Fantastic. Yeah. And I can see it's a, it's a bright, sunny morning wherever you are. So anyway, so, so, so yeah. listen, I've, I've talked for a little bit about our, our series whilst we were, you know, um, looking forward to, to joining us on screen. And essentially what we are doing in, in this series is understanding you, you know, understanding your journey, how you got to do what you do. And, and we think it's so interesting because I know I'm really looking forward to this because I know you've, you've um, taken a, a, a path which I think will be very relatable and, and absolutely fascinating for everyone that listens in. And, um, but we love this. This is all about sort of learning about you, the person behind the business. So, so let's kick off with a, you know, a question about you, Dana Mason, yeah, how do you get to be in your loft with, um, you know, in, in your studio teaching <laughs> yoga? What, 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 what's the story behind Diana Mason? Okay. Um, well, I am a mother of two teenage boys, a wife and a dog owner. And um, I am also a yoga instructor specializing in offering um bespoke menopause yoga sessions um, on a one-to-one -one basis and also um, in workshop um, structures um, to local women as well as to law firms, so targeting corporates as well. And I'm a fitness coach specialist specializing in older women. Um, and um, I didn't grew up in England. I was born and uh, grew up in South Africa, Cape Town, um, to Portuguese immigrant parents. So I was the first in the family to go to university. They didn't understand why I wanted to do that. Anyway, um, I studied law in South Africa and um, the theory and practice of law was very different. So I was really disillusioned practicing law um, under the uh, apartheid regime, so I decided to leave. I went to Portugal and spent a wonderful year in um, Portugal, no parents, free on my own, and um, I had to spend a year there to get the EU passport, but um, 
Uh, uh, I love I love Portugal. Um, my childhood was very active. Um, there was something I was good at. It was running. So they um, got me to compete against all the boys' schools. So I really enjoyed athletics, um, the outdoor life. Um, uh, arriving in London, I arrived here in 1993. So there was a recession going on. So the Law Society hadn't set up the um, conversion course for foreign lawyers. So I had to work in retail for a year, which was really tough. And um, little expressions like in South Africa, you say, I'll do it just now. Uh, was not understood by my managers because they wanted it done right now. So it was a <laughs> huge learning curve. I lived on mung beans and lentils and spinach and Guinness for six months to try and make ends meet. So those were the really frugal years, which I look back on uh, fondly. I remember one occasion I was carrying a pizza, which I'd saved up to buy um, along the pavement in, when I was living in Putney, and it was snowing, and the pizza fell face down. <laughs> And I picked it up and I ate it. That's how bad <laughs> things were in those years. <laughs> so I, I did the conversion course, qualified as a lawyer, um, worked in private practice and um, for a government agency, and then was lucky enough to be um, given the opportunity to work in banking. So I really enjoyed that because having been diagnosed with ADHD when I was three years old, I love that in the city, everything happened really fast. You sent an email, you got a reply in an hour. If you didn't get a reply in an hour, there was something wrong. You could escalate it. So um, I enjoyed um, contract work, drafting and negotiating, derivative contracts um, for the traders and banking. And then my, um, my health started to suffer because with ADHD, you just want to do this course and that course, and you take on too much. So... It was then that I discovered um, yoga and meditation, which helped me um, manage my insomnia and anxiety. It really helped. Uh, I was actually prescribed antidepressants by my GP because of the, the insomnia. It got so bad. And I managed to wean myself off the antidepressants over six months by way of regular yoga and meditation. And I still use yoga and meditation today to help me with those symptoms. Um, I discovered, um, I took a sabbatical to look after my mum because she was terminally ill with cancer. My parents came over uh, from South Africa after I'd been here for 10 years. And uh, so it was a huge shock to find that she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, so I took that time off to look after her, which was great. But um, in that time, I, I had a health check and discovered I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis as well. So, um, which they think it's caused by chronic stress. Um, anyway, once my mum passed away, I realized a lot of things. And I'd made a promise to her that I would complete my yoga teacher training, which I had started, obviously having mm. ADHD, yet another course I did. Um, and I did, I really enjoyed it. And that was the start of a long journey um, of doing one course of a, after another to deepen my knowledge and understanding of yoga mainly. Um, I then became a mum at the ripe old age of 40. I have two teenage boys now. Uh, and uh, I did try to go to work about seven years ago, but we had bad luck with nannies. So um, once I realized, you know, that was not going to happen again, um, I just decided to further my studies and uh, became a bar instructor, a Qigong instructor, and eventually I um, got into personal training um, as a fitness coach specialist. Do, do you know, what, it's, this is what I really love about this series. It's, you know, if, if I introduce her, I go, well, Diana, she's a fitness instructor and you know, she, she helps people through their menopausal journey. Fantastic, we know you're really good at that. But just think about all that stuff that you've just shared with us. It is, um, there's so much that I think that anyone that is watching this or you know, catch up on it later is gonna relate to, I think in, in such an interesting way where you know, here you are, you've had these different, I, I call them chapters in someone's life, you know, and these chapters have been punctuating, there's been a career path um, where you've been a professional at one point and you know, pursuing those qualifications there's been your personal journey of, you know, changing country, having to navigate those challenges of a, you know, a complex system of having to, you know, 
kind of requalify or you know at least convert to the um, you know, to the British system, and um, but and then obviously managing challenges, your own health challenges, um, being an adult daughter yourself, and and dealing with the you know the emotions of of losing your mother, and but also this discovery of this thing that that you were you know I guess awakened in you in the form of the yoga and the meditation and your your own health journey allowed you to discover this and now here you are pursuing your passion and you are you know, you've managed to turn this into a business and and i hear this over and over and again from um you know the different business owners that i interview on this series is that you know it, it's there's, there's so much relatable to it whether it's that it's that honesty and that candor that means that you reveal so much about the different chapters that you uh, have it have gone through i mean you continue to go through and have it kind of interwoven with these these sort of personal um uh you know anecdotes as well and but I, I think it's also this this again this this thread that we see over and over again of how particularly women continue to invest in themselves and um yes you take these breaks and you you take these sort of you you, you make these changes on your on your journey but there is this constant desire to invest in yourself, invest around you in, in, in terms of um, you're pursuing that underlying passion. So thank you very much for, for, for sharing that. I, I really enjoyed this. And I think anyone that, that's watching this will, will you know, at, at various points whilst you were sharing that journey, go, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I relate to that. All that means something. So so what I would say before I you know, we move on to, to the business is, look, We've got a few people um, tuned in today. I'm so pleased about that. It, it may be that you know Diana. Um, maybe you, you're, you know, you're connecting in with her story. If you've got questions that you want to ask her, please pop them into the comments box. This is we find this is a really, really helpful exercise, and means that we can learn you know, a, a bit more about one another. But but let's sort of you know, let's move on to um, to the business. And I love the name of the business. You know it. It's that whole thing of, you know, we know exactly what you do. Stronger women over 50. If anyone was in any doubt, it, it, it's very <laughs> obvious. But let's, you know, let, let's find out more. You know, let, let's tell us about, you know, you talked a little bit about investing in you and your qualifications. But what was the, what was the trigger moment? What, what was the light bulb that turned this from a passion to a business? Yes. So I was getting older. I mean, I was um, a mum at the age of 40. Um, and my clients were, my yoga clients were getting older as well. I mean, I have um, a range of clients, range, you know, from the age of about 47 to about, they're now 79. And I noticed that not wow. just my clients, but I was suddenly, you know, developing tennis elbows, shoulder impingement, plantar fasciitis, balance issues. And a lot of the older clients were, um, saying, I can't come to yoga today because I've tripped, fallen over the, you know, a few loose stones. And um, I did a bit more research and I realized what was missing. Yes, yoga and meditation, wonderful stress release. But women over 40, including myself, um, we needed to strength train. We needed to um, improve our bone density, regain the muscle mass that we have lost, etc., etc. So I started studying uh, personal training and I noticed that um, the personal, the basic personal training course was really geared more towards men. All the studies had been done on men, not on women. And when I tried to look for a personal trainer, it was either a man or a really young woman. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted somebody who was more or less my age, who would understand my journey, um, that the fact that I would have bad days, good days, and so I studied and I did another course um, which specialized in fitness coach uh, training uh, for older women. And that was great because it went into the programming for a perimenopausal woman, a menopausal woman, a postmenopausal woman, as well as the nutritional and lifestyle changes you should encourage your clients to adopt. Um, so, so that is why I started Stronger Women Over 50 because I noticed that um, I and my clients were experiencing issues which I thought could be resolved through strength training. Yeah. Fabulous. Wow. And but again, it comes back to, you know, you could see through your own needs that gap that was, you know, that gap in that market. And now what is 
you know, an enormous, um, enormous sort of market and servicing a, you know, a, a really important, um, a really important need. So, so tell us a little bit more about the business. You know, tell us what services you provide and, yeah. and who exactly that they're for and, and, and how people could access them. Okay. Yes. Um, so I offer strength training and conditioning sessions to women over 40 on a one-to-one -one basis or a two-to-one -one basis, if they've got a friend that they want to share a session with, I can keep an eye on the maximum two people at the same time, uh, depending on how I structure the session. I offer 30-minute sessions as well as 45-minute sessions, hour-long sessions. Um, so a lot of the clients opt for two half-an-hour sessions per week. That's proved very popular. And there's always a yoga warm-up and a yoga cool-down as well. Um, in addition to that, I um, offer menopause yoga sessions on a one-to-one -one basis or in a workshop scenario. So the workshops are held at the moment in my loft studio. I can have a maximum of five women. But I'm looking, I have found um, uh, a venue in Hampton. So after, after the summer holidays, I could um, see myself offering um, sessions in the Hampton area to bigger groups of women if there was a demand for it. Um, so, for example, if a woman came to me wanting a menopause yoga one-to-one -one session, if I could see she was very tired, I would spend more time doing restorative yoga uh, movements as well as offering a guided yoga nidra meditation um, just to de-stress and restore balance, you know, um, calm the whole nervous system down. Um, because uh, women over 40 are trying to hold it all together. We have to be the mother, the wife, the dog owner, um, you know, earning, uh, holding down a job. So there's just so much to do, so many demands placed on us. And I can offer them a sanctuary where they can have time to themselves and they may not feel like doing strength training on that day. Maybe they just want to do stretching. So I can just adapt it to how they're feeling on that particular day. Um, uh, what else did I want to say? Um, I, I whilst, whilst, I you're, whilst you're doing that, I, I love the idea of offering a sanctuary. And, um, it, it, and it, I think that's, that's a really, really nice way to articulate it. And, you know, and it's recognizing, I think, that you understand your client. And, you know, and I think the way you touch on that, you know, women in particular, and I, I, I mean, I hate sort of too much generalization, but, but women in particular, we carry a lot of load, as you say. And, that then, you know, manifests itself physically as well, and you know, clearly, you know, clearly emotionally. And offering someone a, a sanctuary to be able to, you know, decompress, as it were, and um, you know, achieve those personal goals, I, I think is is something that's very appealing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so um, I mean, obviously, there are personal trainers out there, and uh, you know, we've got some menopause apps. Um, experts out there and things and what, what, what do you think makes you stand out from the crowd what what um you know, what makes you, you what you're doing different um well i have very intimate warm cozy little home gym here so there are no bulky muscly men parading around the place you know looking down at um older women who are wanting to um strength train in a gym environment so i think it's a it's a safe um, private space and uh, depending on how the woman is feeling we can you know change as to you know what, how we're going to be uh, training on that particular day um, I can I also have the yoga and the meditation tools um, to weave into their um, sessions depending on how they're feeling um, and I have a, a YouTube channel I have two YouTube channels, one for the yoga and the meditation. The other one is for the strength training and conditioning. So if they subscribe to that, they, can, they have access to um, little videos of exercises they can do to add to what they do with me on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, there's lots out there on, on YouTube, but I'm also trying to build up my little library of um, you know, strength training and conditioning, hit routines, stretching routines to offer. As regards the menopause yoga workshops or the one-to-one -one sessions, I work very closely with a menopause doctor um, who uh, will take any questions and answer them if I can't answer them. Um, so she, she really backs me up and supports me on the medical front. 
Um, and um, yes, I mean, the, the workshops are a wonderful shared experience, um, which include specially adapted yoga practices with breathing techniques and mindful meditation um, hacks, you know, depending on where a woman is in her, on her menopausal journey. I can sign well to, as to where they can get information to inform them as to how they should speak to their GP so that they are empowered and know what they should be getting. Um, yes, and we stay in touch because in addition to the YouTube channel, I have a private Facebook group, so there's continued support sharing of, of information on that and a little WhatsApp group as well where we can exchange ideas and you know, talk about how they're feeling. Oh, I'm experiencing this today. Any suggestions? So I'm there. A continued support system even after the workshop is over and done with. I think that point is really interesting about you're, you're building a community that is where where your clients, yes, they feel yes. they belong. They're, they're in the right place. They feel safe and secure and supported, as you know, as you're talking about. But they've also got, it's a like-minded community as well, which we know, you know, through all the work we've done at Really Health the Club, is finding that sort of relatability and, and about like-mindedness is incredibly important because you know, you've got to be in that space in order to be able to thrive and to benefit from, from what you're offering. So I think, you, you know, you, you make a really interesting point there. And so, you know, part of, part of this series is, um, you know, to learn about you and uh, you know, about what you offer and, and your, your, your different services and, and, and so forth but also to learn about you as a, as a business owner. So here you are, you know, you've gone through that, that really sort of varied and interesting journey, you know, through sort of being a lawyer, um, you know, taking time out, being a mother, overcoming your own health challenges, now launch your own business. So, you know, in the time you've now been running your business, what are some of the things that, you know, that, that you've learned and, and, and how, what would you say is the most rewarding side of, of running your business? Um... I think getting to know my clients over the years, uh, 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 you know, we've developed a little community. Um, in two weeks' time, I'm going to be having a little tea party in the garden for um, all the yoga clients to uh, just end the year before the summer break. So, yes, so we have become like a little family. I do enjoy that um, aspect of it. And um, being able to... Um, guide women through this journey that I started navigating 10 years ago when there was very little out there. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've taken bioidentical hormone lozenges and, and the body identical um, protocols. So a number of um, products on the HRT front, I've tried um, natural alternatives as well. So I feel that I can talk from a position of experience when um, talking to women about menopause um, and about what we need to do after the age of 40 to live a better, fuller life. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and I sense that you, you gain a real sense of, um, I guess, reward and um, fulfillment by creating that safe space for, the, for those women to be able to unwind and to be able to, you know, to, to find that sanctuary that, that you're talking about. So here you are running your own business. Um, and if you were, you know, if, if someone listening in here is saying, well, I think I'd like to start a business, um, what would you say, you know, you, you've learned in your journey so far, what, what would be your, you know, your, your single biggest tip for someone? Um, yes, that's a very good question. Um, what I've learned is you have to develop your niche. So it's no good my saying, oh, I'm just going to, um, focused on um, on women, um, you have to actually refine it. So I'm in the process of refining that even further. So not just women over 40, I'm slowly progressing towards it, towards focusing on the postmenopausal woman. So a woman 50 and over. Because there are a lot of women, postmenopausal women out there who have regrets. Um, about so many things, and I feel that I can, I can help them in so many ways using the tools that I have to to feel better about themselves and just look forwards rather than looking back at what could have been, should have been, etc. I think that's a really important point you make, actually, and that you know, 
with longevity um, rising, that whole sense of, um, you know, missed opportunities, regrets, and actually being able to park those and recognize that actually you can um, step forward. You can move forward. You don't have incredibly important and yeah. so I think that's a you know it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting um, you know angle that you, that you're offering and so here you are you know you, you you've launched your business you're clearly loving and thriving and enjoying what you're doing but if we if we sit down Dana in you know a year maybe you know two years time what do you think you'll be talking to, to us about then you know what, what what do you think you'll be looking back in the rearview mirror and go well I um you know, I, I did this, I did that, and actually, gosh, I, you know, we went in that direction, and you know, so, so wh where do you envisage the business you going next? Okay, yes, um, I have been thinking about this the la over the last few weeks, um, and speaking to to my personal trainer about this, um, and um, I would like to reach more women. Um, there are a lot of women who would like to embark on the whole strength training journey, but they can't afford the one-to-one -one sessions or they don't live near me, they can't travel to me. So I hope I will be able to look back and say, well, I've created this um, online program for perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal women offering strength training, conditioning, uh, so that they can get stronger from the comfort of their home with basic equipment, which I would advise them to buy. And so using an online program, they can connect with me and um, uh, achieve everything that they would like to achieve. So yes, reaching more people through an online program. Very, very good indeed. And um, so, Dana, you know, it, 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 it's been a pleasure talking to you and um, and I wish you well on your journey. Oh, and I have, you. I have I have no doubt. I mean, it, it's it, it's so fascinating watching how you've grown, how you've gone on to launch your business. And now here you are offering offering that safe space to people. And I guess it's it's again, it's around resilience as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want women to know that just because they've turned 50, it's not the end of their lives. Everything is starting to happen for them because they are coming into their own, they're discovering who they really are, who they want to spend more of their valuable time with, who they don't want to spend time with, and that they can get stronger, fitter, healthier with my help, and they can really kick ass. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And, and, and on that note, I'm going, to draw, I, 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 I'm going to draw it to a close. But thank you so much. It's been pure pleasure, I mean, pure joy to uh, to talk to you uh, this morning. And um, I love that. So if you are a woman in your 40s, in your 50s, and you're looking to build your resilience, find that safe space and kick some ass, then uh, be sure to contact Dana. <laughs> Dana, thank you so much um, for, for, for your time this morning. Uh, thank and, you. Um, and we we'll look forward to, to following your journey and to catching up again. Thank you very much, everyone who's joined us. Um, you know, what, what, what Dan is okay. offering here, I think, is incredibly important. And um, so we'll share this on our YouTube channel and um, we will share this everywhere. But if you've enjoyed this, then please don't just keep it to yourselves. Share the video onwards when we've put it onto our YouTube and then onto different social media platforms. We'll pop it onto the Really Helpful Club website as well. So, um, you know, we're here to, to help people take their next step forward. And uh, I think there's a huge amount of, of value that Dana has to share. And I will just conclude on this, on this, uh, on this note from um, one of the lovely people who's tuned in this morning, who says, fantastic live, ladies. I'm off to kick some ass. So brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. You too. All the best. Bye.